Here. This time I'd like to invite you all to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I please have a motion and a second for the Charrington 50th anniversary resolution? So moved. Second. Okay, at this time, so we shouldn't vote. Okay. Let's do it. Are you reading it? Yeah, I'm going up there to read it. Then you want to go ahead and vote? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you please call the roll? Mr. Filardo? Yes. Dr. Masterbaker? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. At this time, I would like to um, recognize Mr. Filardo. Thank you, President Cotter. It's uh, always a joy when we get to honor and recognize um, outstanding service and work um, throughout the district. And tonight we have a special recognition of the Charrington Elementary community. I am going to go to the podium. I would ask the board, uh, uh, Dr. Kellogg, uh, to join us up front um, we, for, for uh, this resolution, and then um, we will come forward and recognize. Oh, yes, sorry. and Treasurer Marshall. I forgot to mention her name. Um, this is a recognition of uh, Charrington Elementary, as I said, their 50th uh, birthday. And at this point, I would like to have uh, Principal Andrew Heck come forward, please, and I will read the resolution. And I think, Andy, you have a uh, contingent here, right? I do. I do. A cheering section. Um, well, why don't we, why don't, the cheering section, why don't you at least stand where you are <laughs> so we can recognize all these good folks from Charrington have come to uh, celebrate with us. Let me, um, let me read the resolution. Resolution of commendation for Charrington Elementary School. Whereas passage of a 1966 bond issue allowed for the construction of Charrington Road School, which was named after Ernst Charrington, a prominent leader in the Anti-Saloon League in Westerville, and whereas while digging the foundation on the 10.2 acre site for the new building, numerous arrowheads were found, leading to the belief that the first people who occupied that location were Native Americans from the Miami or Shawnee tribe, and whereas, when the new facility was dedicated on September 29, 1968, Superintendent Harold C. McDermott, Principal Arthur Wright, and Westerville Board of Education President Horace W. Troop Jr. delivered remarks, while Zora Yalman, a secretary with 34 years of service in the district, cut the ribbon. And whereas, in its inaugural year, Charrington housed 11 classrooms for students in grades kindergarten through six, and enrollment was 436 with an average class size of 33. And whereas throughout the years, where Ch while Charrington has undergone additions, renovations, growth, and even a name change, the real story is found in the students, the staff, and the parents who brought it to life and transformed it into an exemplary, award-winning elementary school. Therefore, be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education, Superintendent John Kellogg, congratulate Principal Andrew Heck and the Charrington Elementary School on 50 years of excellence in education this day, September 10, 2018. Give them a nice hand.
explain on Friday? I, I think it would be nice if the Charrington staff came forward. Well, since I'm saying it and it's already recorded, you have to come forward and shake their hands. Don't you think they ought to shake yes, hands? We just, we just want to invite anybody to our 50th birthday party on Friday. Uh, we're doing a pint of half full and so many other uh, activities. So, uh, That's And before we give them uh, one more hand, uh, the birthday party is on Friday, this Friday, what time? 6 to 7.30. 6 to 7.30 at Charrington. The weather's going to be great. And, wait for it, they are going to have cake. <laughs> so I will be attending, and even if none of you attend, give them one more round of applause. Well done. So, Nancy, based on our conversation as you were sitting down, I will make mention uh, real quick, Nancy brought it to my attention, um, the name um, uh, Horace Troop Jr. Uh, I think it's real important we always acknowledge the history of this community relative not just to Westerville in total, but the school systems. Um, if, uh, if you know anything about Westerville history, the troop name uh, is legendary, although it's one that we don't hear very often anymore. Uh, Judge Troop, uh, also uh, a key citizen early on, uh, in, uh, in all of the activities with the NA Saloon League and everything that was going on. Uh, Horace Troop Jr., uh, Martha Troop Miles is actually uh, the former owner of the home that I live in, and actually Judge Troop lived uh, on the same street that you live on. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and their community activism over the course of the history of the first, uh, you know, 50 to 70 years of uh, the 20th century were really big contributions to the city of Westerville, so, and our school district. So it's worth mentioning that as well. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, um, agenda item 4.01 is the minutes for the meeting held on Monday, August 27, 2018. We don't normally vote on our minutes, but are there any comments or questions from the board on that group of minutes? No? Okay. Moving on to agenda item 5.01, summer school report. Um, Dr. Ebert. Thank you, President Cotter, Pre Treasurer Marshall, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg. I, we come, I come to before you <clears throat> twice a year. Uh, one, to report on what we did over the summer, and then I'll be back again <laughs> later on and talk about what we're going to do for 2019. But uh, tonight we're focusing and celebrating the success of summer 2018. So. We'll go ahead and jump right into this. So for those of you that are not aware, we have our summer school programming opportunities for high school where we offer credit recovery, credit advancement. We provide middle school intervention as well as elementary for our K-3 as well as our 4-5 program. And then we also provide an almost kindergarten program for just those students that have never actually engaged in any kind of school work in, in an effort to help give them an experience before they get there on the first day of school. And so I'm actually going to cover all of these with you and what we did. So we had three areas of focus that came as a result of our, my report to you. And we had some great discussions and, and also what you wanted to see in our program for the 2018 year. And one of the things that you wanted us to do was increase the middle school enrollment. And we felt it important to um, go, go strong or go home. So we said we wanted to increase it by at least 20% which is a pretty significant amount, and I'll share, you, because I'm sharing the number is probably why you know I, I beat it, right? But anyway, uh, yeah, it was at least 20%. I still would have put it up there had we got under it. Not really. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> so we also want to do an enhanced student engagement using virtual reality to support our online digital content. As you know, we, we provide all of our high school programming is using digital content. And sometimes the, there's opportunities there that our students don't always have, for example, in a chemistry lab. And uh, we wanted to figure out a way in which we could provide that opportunity to our students. So uh, we'll share that. 
and, and what we did around that. And then also we wanted to provide targeted um, relentless instruction. And I use that word relentless because when you're trying to, if you're a student and you're a family and they, uh, you've yet to pass the third grade reading guarantee to go on to fourth grade, uh, we take it very seriously in our community and in our school to provide all kinds of support uh, to get those kids over the hump to get them on to fourth grade. So we'll talk about that. And then we also wanted to engage existing uh, uh, and also uh, some, and form some new community partners and we'll talk a little bit about that. So our first was our community partner, Neighborhood Bridges, and Neighborhood Bridges continues to do some wonderful things. Rick Bannister was going to be here this evening. He heads up Neighborhood Bridges, and he actually is in Hilliard tonight developing Hilliard Bridges, so he wasn't able to be with us, but, you know, they provided $1,805 in scholarships for our students, and while we, we never want barrier, you know, money to be a financially to be a barrier for our families. We always try to figure out ways in which we could get all kids to be able to participate if they're wanting to do so. And so we provide scholarships. You know, families do pr provide some dollars in. It, there's no such thing as a 100% scholarship, but uh, families do provide some. And then we also support that uh, through these scholarships through Bridges. So we actually provided 11 students scholarships at the high school level and 15 in grades K through 8. So we celebrate all that uh, Neighborhood Bridges does for us in our community during the summer, but also during the school year, for example, providing a little bit of a, uh, different kinds of items for our uh, school and our high school, for example, throughout the entire year. So there's just many, many ways, not just financial, that Neighborhood Bridges is stepping up for, and to support us. Our high school summer school, uh, we ended up, you'll recall, uh, we used to have $400 uh, per credit across the board for both credit recovery and credit advancement. However, we chose uh, two years ago to for credit recovery to provide uh, to to charge two hundred dollars, and that and that did provide uh, a great deal of uh, ability for our students to participate, and it increased our enrollment, which I'll show you here shortly. I want to talk about how we use technology. I've asked Mr. Rovtar, who is our science teacher, also helped us support a little bit as an administrative team. Mr. Nickel got promoted to assistant principal. He had to do some stuff over the summer, so Steve helped step in. So Steve is going to share with you uh, this and kind of walk you through what you're seeing here. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Dr. Ebrick, back in the spring, he had asked me to uh, take this on. He said, Steve, I want you to buy an expensive virtual reality system and figure out how we might use it for our school. And so that's pretty exciting. It, now, I, it will was, say for, I will say for the community, it was cost-effective expensive. Cost-effective <laughs> expensive. It, you, uh, you know, essentially have to put a, a decent amount of money into a computer that's going to support this kind of a system. And what you see here is uh, one of our summer school students. He was one of my chemistry students and a uh, brilliant guy. Um, he, you know, basically we gave him the opportunity to try out. It's kind of hard for you to see the picture there, but I guess it is running. Cool. <laughs> what you're going to see off to the right see, that's what we like to hear. Uh, will be, you can see he's mixing up the chemicals virtually. And, you know, when you can hear this, you can hear the glass clinking, you're, you're measuring the solutions, you're looking at graduated cylinders and beakers, and you know, you have to essentially do everything you do in a regular chemistry lab. Get it? And what he's doing, he of course got everything the way he was supposed to, and it was pretty nice awesome. So it was a neat way to <laughs> safely have him do what you do in a chemistry lab. And, uh, you know, it makes you put on your safety goggles before you can even progress, which is, of course, an important thing. And uh, so now, uh, I don't know if the other picture is up there. We also um, have, we, we had a, uh, a student that we trained up to basically learn how to uh, use this program so that uh, the picture on the left there is our current lab assistant that we're using in the program right now. And we had her come in extra over the summer, and she learned how to use this system so that we, she would be prepared to learn how to, you know, teach our new students coming in in our EOS program. So she uh, became one of our resident experts, knows all the games and, and the programs and things that we're using so she can teach students. And uh, essentially, we're providing a lab experience for science students and, and various other things that you know, in a virtual scenario. So it's kind of a neat thing. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. I like the concept of it. Traditionally, we've always provided, uh, in the traditional schools, we've provided uh, credit flex opportunities for students to earn elective credit as a lab assistant. 
we have virtual lab assistants. And I think this is just kind of another pr opportunity for our kids. And she comes in half a day, uh, ha uh, three hours early to school to serve in this capacity for our students. And she's, she's getting elective credit as a result of that. So it, she's learning and also has the opportunity to use it herself. So it's just re really cool. <clears throat> Next, I want to highlight our enrollment. So as you can see, we, before we instituted the uh, lower price for our credit recovery students, we were around 200 students, 216. Uh, we were 267 this past year, excuse me, this past summer. And then uh, you can see the number of students advancing credit, uh, students uh, in terms of our success rate who earned credit advancement at 96%. Students that recovered credit, I'm pleased to say we were at 90%. And our overall students who earning credit was 92. The previous year was 84. So we continue to get better at what we're doing. And I will say that I always concerned about the students that we leave behind that don't earn the credit. And there were 21 students that didn't earn the credit. The issue, though, was they can't earn the credit if they're not attending. And as you can see, I put on there that they missed 21 out of 30 days. And I would almost contend if they earned credit, I'm not sure how much the fidelity we're administering our program with. But I will say that not one parent uh, was not informed that their student wasn't attending and they were very much aware and um, that's a whole other thing but my point is there were no surprises at the end of the year whether the students weren't going to pass because we were in constant communication with these families but if you if you want to pass this, the class you got to attend so and that's just one piece of data I wanted to share also uh, from a credit flex standpoint you can see that we continue to encourage students that if if the su our summer program isn't going to work for you where else can you go and what can we do to vet that curriculum to make sure it's transferable and you can see there at the bottom we had 129 two years ago in credit flex over the summer and this past year we had 199 students uh, earn credit outside of the Westerville schools but yet at the same time all of that curriculum where students are going is vetted by our curriculum specialist to ensure that it meets our standards so we celebrate that that we're providing a lot of opportunities high school enrollment highlights uh, you can see that our, the, the year that we put in to the opportunity for our students uh, for our PE, PE uh, waiver and uh, you can see that we've gone from 334 down to 35 students now, but still students are coming if, that are wanting to choose that option. We've continued to increase the number of students in our Algebra 1. We did see a decrease in Algebra 2 enrollment. We went from 61 the previous year to 31 this year, and part of the reason for that is we instituted a, uh, implemented an Algebra 2 essentials class at the high school level, traditional face-to-face, -face, and I believe that that resulted in us decreasing the number of students that needed to recover credit. So I think there was some benefit uh, to that program just as seen through that piece, of, that data right there. And then also our geometry stayed the same. Our middle school intervention program, uh, we focus on grades six through eight. Again, it's a four-week program, whereas the high school is a six-week program. Here's the number that we're most proud of, and I will always remember the board challenging us to, to figure out a way to get more middle school students involved. We increased our enrollment by 27%. So we beat it, exceeded it, and uh, we celebrated that. We also decided that it was, was important for our middle school program to make sure that we're continuing to focus on social emotional growth. And we uh, have a measurement tool to ascertain that. And as you can see, 77% of our students actually indicated a positive increase in social emotional growth through this instrument. We have the pre and the post assessment as a result. 8% remained the same. We had 15% indicated a slight change, uh, a slight to mild decline. And there was no, 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 no student at all had a significant decline. So we celebrate that data that we, we increased enrollment and we increased uh, the ability for them to feel comfortable where they were and to grow socially, emotionally, as well as academically. So I'm going to ask Greg Mantoniques, our uh, secondary administrator, to come up and speak about our community partners and our career exploration program. Uh, at the middle school. Yeah, so this year I was uh, the administrator at the four through eight program. I'd like to thank you and Superintendent Kellogg and Dr. Ebrecht for uh, affording us that opportunity. And what I think is 
uh, I was telling Mr. Villardo before the meeting that uh, uh, I've been active with the summer intervention program for somewhere around between 13 and 14 years, and this was what I thought was by far our most successful year, and that had a lot to do with the teachers that were working there and the program that we were able to implement, the, the we called it STEAM or iSTEAM program, um, kind of re revamping, doing different things uh, with intervention, with science, with uh, uh, technology, engineering, uh, art, math. I think we changed one of the letters, was it? Uh, we added, we, we changed the E from engineering to English language arts because we really did um, kind of have st uh, all the teachers integrate everything within that and w work very closely with uh, um, the, the art and the engineering teachers and, and do a lot of those things. We also had a number of community partners. So you can see the people who came in and the biggest thing was is that caused a reduction in the amount of discipline problems that, that we saw, uh, even bus write-ups, kids were engaged, there was an increase in attendance, and I think it was in speaking to the students, that's exactly it, is so many of these these students came in thinking, well, this is just going to be, you know, me sitting through two hours of math, and I didn't even like 50 minutes of math. And now they kind of had other opportunities, and they saw there are different things out there for me, and so maybe this whole education thing is worth it because I see kind of the end game. Uh, students, particularly speaking to, they loved uh, watching uh, Matt Ryan come in, and uh, a number of them were interested in kind of the DJ uh, atmosphere and and trying to be DJs or work work into the the entertainment industry themselves, and then a number of them who were interested in pursuing military careers and uh, having a uh, chance to speak with Sergeant Bove. And so um, those were great things that really kept the students engaged. And then um, obviously the teachers who worked hard every day to make lessons engaging and and uh, going through a number of uh, activities. And, and while, like Dr. Ebrecht was saying, is uh, all of the, the teaching staff is so serious and takes this so seriously, but they also know, right, if we can make this enjoyable and engaging for these students, then they're gonna know somebody cares about them, and um, hopefully we'll continue that through the year and see that, that growth. Uh, I don't know if that... Why don't you introduce the, the three teachers here? Ah, okay. So, um, well, and I do want to give credit. Uh, Ashley Fraunfelter is not here. Yes, she uh, is oh, look, oh, she is here. Look, so she was one of the people. She was instrumental in scheduling a lot of these, uh, a lot of these speakers. So, thank you to her. So, I'm sorry. I didn't, so, Ashley Fraunfelter, Katie Worthlin, and Scott Delegati. Uh, they were uh, remarkable. Ashley's been working with us for years. Uh, Katie and Scott were new additions that uh, made a, a huge difference in the way. Uh, things rolled in the middle school pro program, so uh, a great thanks to them. Very good. And actually, I actually got married in between our summer program and now, and she's, Miss, I think, Mrs. McFerrin, right? It's, no. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, we got to celebrate things when that happens, you know? All right. So I want to introduce uh, to you Katie Worthlin. Come on up here. Uh, Katie's going to talk with you about our program. Dr. Kellogg was over to see some of this, so you'll see some familiar pictures here, Dr. Kellogg. But... Uh, here you go, Katie. Hi, nice to see you all. Thank you for uh, listening to what we were doing over the summer. Uh, so Scott Delgatti and I were teaming up over the summer to do the engineering and arts aspect of the STEAM program. And what we did is we started over at um, the middle school and did a lot of our um, our sketches, a lot of our ideas, and laying out what we're doing for uh, the program. And then we started going over to the shop at Westerville North. And I must tell you, while the walk from the middle school to the high school was entertaining sometimes, um, it was wonderful to get them out of the building and into the shop at North. Um, over there, what we started doing is we introduced them to a drawing software program that was on the computers. And we had different um, themes, and they had to make some kind of logo or design or visual idea to express who they are individually um, as a person. And then we were also looking at who we are as a collective group as middle school students. So students worked within those themes. And the first step was doing the design on the computer. Um, so we went through the software, taught them how to do the different um, manipulations digitally. Then what we did is we took flat 
cardboard and um, the designs that were created on the computer were then laser etched into the cardboard. And this was basically our uh, preliminary sketches to make sure that they were going to transfer over to the pumpkins. So do they know about that? Go ahead and explain why, <laughs> why pumpkins. Uh, so the reason they, we the were people doing- People already know, at least they should remember. Okay, um, we won't test them whether they remember or not. Good. But, but don't share test with you why we're doing pumpkins. So um, Westerville City and Parks and Recs was looking at doing um, a pumpkin glow for the city as an event in October. Um, so we ended up getting a ton of funkins, fake foam pumpkins, that we began doing designs for that were going to be utilized for this event. Um, so once they ended up having their cardboard design finished, um, we would go in and they were able to look at the cardboard and determine what tweaks they needed to do, what they needed to finish and fix so that it would be rendered correctly on the pumpkin. And then through lots of finagling between uh, Scott and I, we would figure out how to laser etch on a round item when the laser just goes flat. Um, so we had that happen. And then if you look in um, step four, for some of them, they actually went in then and carved out the rest of the design so that a light could be put internally and that it could glow. And the, the other designs that were not carved out were gonna be uplighted. So they would be light on the ground and uplight that so that you could see the designs. Um, the students were incredibly engaged and it got to the point where towards the end of summer school our eighth graders were asking to just come and stay in the shop because they were so engaged in what we were doing they were also very good at picking up their skills and then transferring that <coughs> over to other students who were not um, garnering as much success in the progress of what they're doing and so it was really interesting and inspiring to see these students who typically are not gung-ho about school and about education coming in here and not only are they so enthusiastic about learning themselves but they're enthusiastic about teaching other students as well and trying to help them learn um, and experience success throughout the progress thank you katie so you heard from an expert teacher who does a tremendous job as well as Scott Delegati. And that program would not have been successful without our, all of our teachers. But keep in mind that Katie and Scott had never worked with any of these, with these mediums before and nor the equipment. So they learned just, you know, in between when school was over to when summer started, they put a lot of extra time and effort in, but you can see the result. And uh, so we, we lift them up uh, as exceptional teachers. Also, the Pumpkin Glow event, um, Randy Euler wanted to be here tonight, but he was unable to do family, a family uh, commitment. But uh, one of the things that through this process, the, uh, the City of Westerville and the Parks and Recreation Department quickly discovered that this was a wonderful thing to plan and get going, but it was going to take a lot of time. So we've actually postponed this event until October of 2019. But what's beautiful? is we have another summer now <laughs> to, to replicate what we did and continue to do more uh, for the city of Westerville and the Parks and Recreation Department. So the event is actually, the Pumpkin Glow, is going to be in October of 2019. And uh, we're retaining the student names because you'll recall, perhaps, that um, all students that were involved in this, their families and the students are getting free tickets to this event. So we will be able to get this out to them. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I want to make sure I also acknowledge uh, uh, Rhonda Hoffman, my administrative assistant who's here, she is the person behind the scenes that gets all these uh, applications going and everything, so thank you, Rhonda, for that. Uh, Rick Bannister walked in as well. Rick, I shared with, that you were in Hilliard kind of helping to replicate your program, so Rick joins us. Thank you, Rick. I lifted up Neighborhood Bridges and talked very highly of your program. Watch the tape, okay? <laughs> And then I want to talk about the elementary summer intervention program. And Melissa Kropatsky is here as well, who, who uh, oversees the summer program. And just real quick about that, we focus uh, in on our students uh, through STAR. We, we work on our English language arts, our math. We, uh, we, 
what, this was, stat was very interesting, and it's not a typo. We had 414 students the year before, and we had exactly 414 students this year. It's not a typo. I don't know what happens if it's 414 next year. But uh, we lift up just like the 27% that we, uh, we celebrated of an increase in enrollment for middle school. We celebrated an 83% success rate for our third grade program in reading. Uh, getting 83% of our students, uh, which are 10 out of 12 students, on to fourth grade, and then uh, continued to, to support those families, the, the remaining two, up until school started to try to get them uh, ready for fourth grade and be able to share uh, what they could learn uh, on the alternative placement exam. So just so you know, over the summer, we did move 10 out of 12 uh, into the fourth grade for that. We also demonstrated significant growth. You know, and when you have a four-week program, but yet you grow kids at an average of 3.5 months, that's significant. So four weeks, we grew them three and a half months. I'm thinking if we had them for, what, three months, they would be almost a year. I don't, I don't want to, I, 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 I just want people to look at that, those last numbers. Um, I personally, I, I think it's we, but I'll say me, I personally am very impressed and pleased with that. Grade K, one, two, three. Uh, that's just marvelous to all of you who were a part of this. Uh, it takes from, a dedicated team. I, it, it, well, and it, it clearly does. And whether you get married or not, it, it just takes a dedicated team. And so I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then the last point of data I wanted to share is our almost kindergarten program. And uh, you know, we're always trying to get people involved in this program. I'm hoping that people that watch the program now remember this program <laughs> into next summer. And so you're going to be a little bit surprised that we only helped uh, five students enrolled. We constantly put this out there. We had five. But I equate it to the starfish. Okay, you can walk down that ocean and there's a hundred starfish. But if you pick one up and you throw it back, you save that one. And I'll tell you what, we saved five students. And what I mean by saved is these five students and their families, these students had never experienced school. So when they walked into Anhurst Elementary for the first time, they don't know what school looks like. They don't know what, what, what you necessarily, they don't have that experience, that frame of mind, that reference. And so these families really appreciated. And uh, it was a, it's a break even proposition for us, but I think it's an exceptional opportunity for these five uh, future stars in our school. You like that? All right, very good, all right. I'm an elementary principal, a little corny. Okay, so the 2019 summer learning opportunities, uh, we're gonna continue to figure out, make sure we're identifying students, make sure they're, uh, how can we make sure that we get as many kids in as we can. Uh, we're gonna continue to pilot uh, innovative ways in which we can uh, think about what that might look like for, the, for during the school year. And uh, certainly, we're always going to try to do this within a sp specific budget, uh, which Mr. Hershiser appreciates, so, and Dr. Kellogg. So, so does Mr. that is our program uh, <laughs> presentation for tonight. So thoughts, questions? Any questions from the board? I don't have a question. And Rick, well, I think uh, you summed it up very, very well. Yeah, very I am so pleased with the growth of this program. When I'm talking about growth, I'm not just talking about that incredible middle school percentage. I'm talking about what I often call the high-touch nature of the instruction that's provided these young people and the social-emotional growth that uh, is provided with these young people as well. So I really, truly thank you for these intensive efforts with these young people. It enhances not only their lives and their academic futures and their social futures, but it enhances the life of the district as well. And what you've done this summer is so far beyond what most people believe summer school to be. It's, it's exciting, it's enthralling in a lot of ways. Dang, I wish I could make one of those pumpkins. This sounds like so much fun. But what you've done is, in a lot of ways, rescued academic success for young people, and that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the work you've done on this. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nancy Pitcher. We do, I, 
What do you do to uh, thank these community partners? Anything in particular? I mean, do you just uh, the folks that came in? Um, well, one, we, we celebrate them at the board meeting. <laughs> right. We acknowledge them uh, publicly, okay. and certainly we continue to lift them up, and we'll re-engage them too. Okay. And keep in mind that, as you well know, that the number of the, the, the people that do this, they do it f from sure. the heart, right? Ashley, come on up here so they can hear you in the mic here. Okay. This is what Ashley wanted to do. Um, when I reached out to our community volunteers to come in and, and spend some time with the kids, one of the things that I reiterated with the kids was, you know, these people are taking a day off work or off their schedule and potentially are going to have to work more hours so that they can come in and talk to you. And hmm. it was that important to them to be there. And so one of the things that I taught the kids is when somebody does something nice for you, you need to write them a letter. So that was part of the language arts piece, and we really worked on that, uh, about thanking them and why we were thanking them. More importantly, not just thanks for coming in, but, you know, did it spark a career interest in you? And, that, and that's one of the things um, that meant so much is we saw kids' eyes light up, like, I have a path now. And especially when Columbus State came in and Stanley Black and Decker, there's multiple facets of jobs that they can get involved in. Um, and just with technology and everything, they don't have to go to college to do some of those jobs. Um, and it was kind of eye-opening for them to see that and to be excited about something. So we were really fortunate for those community um, people that came in. So thank you. Well, thanks for pursuing them, and I guess really, uh, Dr. Ebrecht, it's just really a shout out from the board and the staff here that, because we have a huge audience that watches this uh, video, and um, yeah, we, we just want to get the word out. You couldn't have scripted that question any better, but thank you for You're welcome. actually, thank you, off the cuff response, thank you. So Scott, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to your fabulous team here. We really appreciate all you do and going above and beyond and thank you Mr. Bannister um, for supporting our students always in our community we appreciate it and congratulations on the birth of your granddaughter <laughs> um, Scott the only thing I'd like to um, emphasize is I, I really appreciate and uh, am pleased with not just the performance but the establishment of the metrics and the baselines and the expectations um, in the way that the program, all the leaders did this year. Um, that's a repeat that I want to see for next year. And I really, really appreciate, you know, putting goals out there that at first blush seem like a big goal to reach for. The 20% was a big goal. Uh, and to hit 27% is, is exceptional. Um, but I want to make sure that we continue that practice of challenging ourselves by not necessarily looking towards the performance numbers that come from the students' numbers, but the, uh, from the uh, students' attendance, but the goals and thresholds that we really want to see those, uh, those kids reach for. Um, and, and I really think that that will continue to drive this on the trajectory that we've got now. So. I know that this is an annual presentation, and uh, we will continue to be transparent and make sure those metrics are there, so thank you. I would also like to thank you. Um, <laughs> obviously, the numbers are great. Uh, one of the things that I, I think is really different about this approach, too, is you're taking some risks to try and make the content more engaging for students. And I really appreciate that, whether it's bringing in some different people from the community to talk about careers or the pumpkin glow, um, the virtual chemistry. That's all very different and engaging. So thank you for everything. Thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda item 5.02, Dr. Kellogg, superintendent's report. Uh, this evening we have a report from Scott Reeves, who's gonna come forward in a moment as we clear the, the runway. Thank you folks from summer school, Mr. Bannister, outstanding work. And Dr. Kellogg, as uh, Mr. Reeves is making his way up, I unfortunately need to excuse myself. Um, the board is familiar. My, uh, <laughs> my youngest daughter and I are making a trip tomorrow to drop her off at college, which is a typical fall thing, except we're going to be traveling 7,000 miles to do that. 
and we've run into a bit of a travel problem that I just received a call from home base on. Um, so I'm going to need to excuse myself because we have to get that sorted out. So thank you. Safe travels. So uh, President Cotter, members of the board, as you know, um, uh, sometimes uh, the, the normal course of planning doesn't align um, with opportunity. And so you have to be flexible. Um, and that's the case here this evening. So uh, Mr. Reeves uh, is going to um, share with you in the community a program opportunity that came to us. And then later on in the agenda, there's an opportunity for the board to consider funding for that opportunity. I know uh, Dr. Nestor Baker has been part of the conversations and seen some of those presentations. So um, there's information I think we left at your table as well, if you'd like that, for, for uh, part of it. So thank you for being flexible for this evening to allow for this, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Reeves. Thank you, Dr. Kellogg, uh, President Cotter, members of the board. Um, as you know, we do our budget allocations in the spring, but as Dr. Kellogg alluded to, we had an opportunity that we think would be very beneficial for some of our students um, in a program this summer that would cost us uh, an investment that we were not able to budget for this spring. Um, it's a program where some of our students, perhaps some of our more at-risk students in need of, of, of avenues to be able to graduate, can do so by earning industry-recognized credentials, one that would possibly earn them a high school diploma in lieu of passing the state test, give them an amazing uh, experience, uh, a leg up on a, on a potential career, and works with some of, of the more challenging citizens with the developmental board. So I've, I've asked Janice Hall, if I could have Janice come. Janice Hall is a special projects manager from the Ohio Provider Resource Association. It's whose program with which we are looking to invest in for our children. And Janice can give you a, a little bit more expert explanation on the program that we are bringing before the board. Thank you. As Scott said, my name is Janice Hall and I work with the Ohio Provider Resource Association. Um, OPERA is the largest statewide uh, trade association for providers of services to people with developmental disabilities in the state of Ohio. Um, we have over 180 members. Um, so <clears throat> in 2014, when our president, Mark Davis, attended Governor Kasich's State of the State Address, um, Governor Kasich talked about creating alternative pathways to high school diploma. So, and in the meantime, providers of services to people with developmental disabilities have been finding it harder and harder to find, train, and retain qualified, competent staff. In fact, the field of direct support um, is the number one job in demand in the state of Ohio, and it just keeps growing. So we, a light bulb went off over Mr. Davis's head, and he said, we've got to do something about this. And so we wound up brainstorming and came up with a program called Community Connections Career Partnership Ohio. We affectionately call it C3PO. And um, what it is is a program for um, students in their junior and senior years of high school to learn about the field of direct support to people with developmental disabilities. We paired up with the Ohio Alliance of Direct Support Professionals who already had a national award-winning curriculum um, directed to people who currently work in the field. So we took that curriculum and we split it up into a school year and what, and there are actually two credentials that students can earn. The first one is the Certificate of Initial Proficiency and the second one is the Certificate of Advanced Proficiency. So students in their junior year of high school um, will work towards the CIP in their senior year, they'll work towards the CAP, and those credentials have been listed on the High Department of Education's list of industry credentials and will, can earn them a high school diploma. <coughs> we started in 2015-16 school year at Franklin Heights High School in the Southwestern City School District with 12 students who were at risk of not graduating. We were more than surprised when all 12 of those students completed the year, received their credential, and then 10 of those 12 students came back in their senior year, completed the program, received their certificate of advanced proficiency, and all of them graduated. I'd like to tell you a bit about the story of Kelsey. Kelsey um, was a student in that first program. She um, had been um, kicked out 
of three different schools. She was a freshman twice. Her second year as a freshman, she only attended school 37 days. She had a 0.01 grade point average. She entered this program as a junior. She, as I said, received her certificate of initial proficiency, received her certificate of advanced proficiency as a senior, graduated with a 3.89 grade point average. And then she wound up um, entering the field of direct support. And she now has um, received a couple of promotions. She's more of a middle man management person. Remember, she's 21 years old. And um, last fall at Opera's fall conference, we honored her with the highest award that we give to a direct support professional. So I can tell you many, many stories about students like Kelsey who have been in the program. We're just starting our fourth year. Um, we are at five different schools now. We're hoping that you um, will join us at Westerville. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for, thank you in advance for considering um, joining the program. It is a great partnership um, between public and private. Um, not only is the school system involved, the opera is involved, OADSP is involved. We will have local providers of services to people with developmental disabilities who will act as interns for the students. And it also has um, the support of the Delaware County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Um, so I would be happy to take any questions. I know that was pretty brief. I'm not sure what kind of material you have in front of you. Does anyone have any questions or comments? I don't have any questions, but it sounds fabulous. Thank you. Um, you you gave more acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> That's the field of developmental disabilities. <laughs> I that is that is just crazy. That is crazy, and uh, we thought it was Oprah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's uh, o o opera. Uh, opera. opera. Opera ha has given birth to C-3PO. Yes. That's that's what we're talking about, right? Yes. Under the auspices of the of the CAP, C-A-P. And C-I-P. Yes. And the <laughs> yes, the C-I-P. I wrote them both down. Yes. All joking aside, I um, uh, this is a bit of a of a, a, a of a personal thing for me. Um, uh, because I have a I have a, a brother who is confined due to MS, and I just happened to be with him yesterday, and uh, it's the same story every time. The turnover in this field and the lack of qualifications or quality, uh, et cetera. And I, I Doctor. Uh, Mr. Reeves, you know, shared some of this, and uh, I, I uh, uh, my colleague Nancy has shared some of this and been a part of it, and I know she's going to bring some more light to it. I, I, um, I just am very much in favor of this, Thank you. and I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm grateful that ODE, that sometimes I don't have the great deal of confidence in. But I'm grateful that ODE is seeing some wisdom in this path for students um, to achieve a meaningful service in life. Because in the end, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I, I, in, in the end, we're passionate about education. But I would say to you that I'm even more passionate about that at the end of the educational path, the student finds meaningful work and contributes something. And once you get people with developmental disabilities into your heart, it doesn't leave. Yeah. Um, another thing that I'd just like to share real quickly with you is we're very, we were very honored that um, C3PO um, has earned the National Moving Mountains Award um, for its program and the work that we've done in Ohio. And we are talking more and more to other states. To just today, I received another email from the State Department in New York asking us how um, we got started and how we were able to get the credentials recognized by ODE.
Just on the, real quickly on the practical side, I love that there's a that there is a a CIP and a CAP that there is a sequential and an advancement and 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 a deepening of the understanding of this line of work. So it's thank you for coming. Sorry, I didn't mean to take no, no. Thank you very much for being here, and I really appreciate the board's willingness to consider this. Um, as Scott Reeves was saying. We did our allocations earlier in the year before we were aware of this. And we basically had two options. We could wait until next year, or we could ask the board to consider it for this year. Um, I didn't want to waste any more time. I wanted to make sure that we were providing sound, heart-filled pathways that lead to fulfilling lives for our kids as soon as we could do that. And I, as I say, I very much appreciate the board's willingness to consider it. This is a finely tuned partnership, the public-private partnership, between your organization, our local providers within the community, and our school district and our school district personnel. It requires that triangle to make this work well and you have sufficient track record and I was convinced by the information that you shared um, with the meeting that, that we were engaged in. Um, there's enough behind it that tells me it can definitely succeed and there is far more than enough interest and passion on the part of our educators to make it work and I know there's passion within the providers within our community. So I have very high hopes for this. We intend to uh, focus initially on our EOS kids, our EOS students. They need this pathway and the people who they will serve need them. So I am looking forward to seeing how it plays out. This is, as you know, later in the agenda, this requests us to increase our appropriations by $22,000 this year. That is a remarkably small sum for the successes I believe we will achieve in the lives of these young people and in the lives of the individuals that they work with. So thank you for um, being willing to work with Westerville. It will be an excellent partnership. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda item 6.01. Uh, nobody has signed up for public comments for this particular item. Moving on to agenda item 7.01, Auditor of State Award with Distinction. I think that we should be getting this maybe. Would you like to talk about that, Ms. Marshall? Uh, yeah. Um, thank you, President Connor, members of the board. Uh, so we were actually supposed to have a representative from the Auditor of State's office here with us tonight to present the district with an award. Um, it's the Auditor of State Award with Distinction. It's for a clean audit for fiscal year 2017. He couldn't make it tonight, so he'll probably schedule a time for him to come and take a picture with everybody out by the couch. Um, but I did want to highlight the award anyway. Um, it is a really big deal. This is the sixth year that this school district has received the award. Um, so I don't want us all to get immune to how exciting this is because it does take a lot of work of everyone in this school district, um, from the treasurer's office to the building secretaries, I mean everyone. It, it shows that the district is good stewards of taxpayer dollars and that um, we're doing the right thing by our taxpayers and handling the finances. and and complying with all the regulations that are out there that we constantly have to deal with. Do you have a question? Yes, I have a quick question. Okay. Um, is this something that is awarded frequently? Uh, no, so the out of all of the entities that the state of Ohio audits, which includes cities, townships, counties, villages, um, school districts, less than 5% actually receive this award every year. And that's why I wanna say, I wanna make sure that everybody realizes, even though this is the sixth year, it just shows how outstanding the school district has done um, with that. So we will be receiving that award sometime soon. Uh, he just couldn't be here tonight to present it with us, but and we should have a press release going out about that. Okay, um, thank you. Soon. Okay, moving on to agenda item 7.02. Did you want to report on that too? Uh, yeah. So we have um, 
starting a new audit for fiscal year 18 and we have an audit committee that will convene at the conclusion of the this year's audit which should be probably January timeframe I've asked um, in talking with the executive committee I've asked for the same people that were on the audit committee last year we have five individuals uh, who are not district employees who serve on that committee and three of them are able to serve one more year. No, two of them are able to serve one more year, and then three of them are able to serve another two years. So I've asked them all to come back again for this year, and they've all agreed. Uh, those folks are Matthew Bartosik, uh, Margaret Dune, Alfred Hammond, Keith Gaskins, and Eric Kyrie, I think is how you say that last name. So um, they'll be joining us again for uh, the audit committee this year. And we also have uh, Dr. Kellogg, Mr. Hershiser, myself, and President Cotter that serves on the audit committee from the district. So are there any questions about that? We're looking forward to another good audit. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. No, it'll be good. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no pressure at all. Six years in a row, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item 7.03. Um, is there a motion and a second for the resolution to increase the appropriations for the C3PO item? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Would you like me to just mention? So this is sure. to increase the appropriations for the amount that um, Mr. Reeves, to increase Mr. Reeves' budget for uh, this program. So um, it, was, it was something that wasn't budgeted for back in the spring. And then attached to this is also the agreement for, with OPERA for the okay. program. Any other questions or comments? Okay, can you please call the roll? Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, moving on to agenda item. 8.01 through 8.09. Can I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Okay. Dr. Hopkins. Good evening, President Cotter, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg. It's my pleasure to present for your consideration the personnel consent agenda. Some of the highlights tonight include one retirement effective at the end of the year, Susan Zimmerman from McVeigh Elementary School. Always like to recognize them for their outstanding years of service and we'll call her back with all the other retirements at the end of the year to formally recognize her. Uh, we also have 19 resignations of which 13 come from classified positions and six come from the area of supplemental or pupil activity programs. We have one-time payments to cover staff participation and prepare preparation for our recent Westerville Education Day, the employment of 17 individuals in various classified positions, one licensed teacher and two licensed replacement contracts in addition to the employment and adjustment to a number of licensed supplemental contracts and classified pupil service programs. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions from the board? Okay, thank you. Ms. Marshall, can you please call the roll? Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item 9.01, old business, we have none. Um, agenda item 10.01, first reading for the 2019-2020 I mean, academic year calendar. I believe we have Mr. V. Browns coming to speak about that. Good evening, President Cotter, Vice President Davidson, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, Ms. Marshall. Before you this evening for a first reading is the 2019-2020 academic calendar. Uh, the district's calendar committee prepares this calendar annually, uh, and the calendar is then brought to the district's executive leadership team for review. Uh, any adjustments are made at that point before being brought to you for consideration. The final authority to approve the calendar is legally and exclusively that of the Board of Education. Our typical practice has been to have the academic calendar prepared and approved at least two school years in advance, but the 2019-20 calendar was actually put on hold last year in order to survey staff at the beginning of this year. There were a couple of things that we'll periodically reach out to staff to get some feedback on and 
had a couple of unique things occurring with the calendar over the last couple of years and the calendar committee thought it would be a good idea to reach back out to staff and say well, what's your preference um, before I get to a little bit about what that was all about I will let you know that the calendar before you exceeds the minimum number of school year hours required by the state and it includes time to address calamity days or other unforeseen events that could impact the days that school is open the calendar begins the school year for students during the third week of August which is consistent with past calendars and it continues the practice of not beginning the school year with a full five-day week for students the first semester ends prior to winter break and in this calendar winter break actually consists of 16 calendar days for staff and 17 calendar days for students the school year does continue to uh, end before the Memorial Day holiday winter break was one of the items that we uh, evaluated on the survey many many years staff had said we'd really like to have a full two weeks at winter break and we've just never been able to make it happen uh, for the current school year staff actually have 13 calendar days students have 14 calendar days before returning to school uh, so with the 2019 and 20 calendar we were able to increase uh, winter break by three calendar days for each uh, staff and students the calendar has spring break scheduled during the last full week of March which is consistent with past calendars and classes resume March 30th the proposed calendar incorporates professional development days on August 9th and November 5th and then four early release days also for uh, professional development activities on September 26th October 17th January 30th and March 12th representatives from each employee association and other areas of operation such as transportation testing communications and also a representative from parent council are given the opportunity to participate on the calendar committee each year so with that um, tonight's first reading begins the 30-day window of uh, opportunity for public feedback on the calendar before we ask for the second reading and approval and that will happen the second meeting in October any questions or comments from the board okay. thank you mr. V Brands. okay moving on to agenda item 11.01 .01. can I please have a motion in a second to approve our overnight out-of-state field trips so moved second any questions or comments can you please call the roll mrs. Davidson yes dr. Nestor Baker yes mr. Villardo yes Ms. Cotter yes okay moving on to agenda item 11.02 CTE waiver um, can I please have a motion in a second so moved second mr. Reeves thank you president Cotter um, as you recall we've done this a couple of years in a row now uh, as a requirement by the state if you do not offer state approved career technical programming at the seventh or eighth grade level you must provide a resolution stating that you do not offer and currently we do not have career technical approved coursework at the eighth grade level we do at the seventh grade level with our engineering course but we do not currently at our eighth grade level and so the board is asked to uh, in compliance with the requirements from the Ohio Department of Education provide a res resolution stating as such <coughs> any questions or comments okay thank you mr. Reeves can you please call the roll dr. Nestor Baker yes mr. Florida yes mrs. Davidson yes Ms. Cotter yes okay moving on to agenda item 12.01 public comment we do not have anyone signed up for this public comment period moving on to agenda item 13.01 board comments does anyone have comments or thoughts they want to share one thought that I'd like to share thinking about the summer school report and the superintendent's report this evening as we look at the groups of students that we were focusing on in that and those reports it is a very strong indicator of the attention that we are paying to all of our students needs and it's also a very strong indicator of the way we're looking for new opportunities to provide additional pathways 
and exciting pathways. That benefits not only the students that we were talking about this evening, but it benefits delivery of instruction across our entire district. Everyone benefits when we create these high-touch opportunities for our students. Uh, Dr. Kellogg, I thank you for encouraging your staff to push forward and to look for those opportunities and to make these things come alive. It's important, it's exciting, and it speaks very well for what this community receives from its public education system. Anyone else? Okay, um, thank you. Moving on to agenda item 14.01. The board will meet in regular session at 6 p.m. on Monday, September 24th in the board training room at the Early Learning Center and then move into a work session on Monday evening, September 24th at 6.30 p.m. in the Skybox here at the Early Learning Center. Um, at this time, I am excited to entertain a motion and a second for adjournment. So moved. Second. Can you please call the roll? Mr. Velarde? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. Thank you all for joining us this evening.